Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag Leadership, What's On Your Mind? Remember, we're a podcast to make you stop and think about your leadership journey and we're going to invite people along to tell us about their leadership journey and tell us about the expertise they have in this subject. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you follow us on your podcast provider. So today we've got Andy. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on. I'm all good. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And just to put, this is the last episode of 2022. So it's a bit of an honour to have the last episode. And we've right. only recently met. And this happens all the time. That like, is speak to people that are like, like-minded. You tick lots of boxes in the conversations I like to have around leadership. So we've got the sport and the business and also sort of youth development and talent acquisition. But we'll go into that. We'll go yeah. into that. So... As I hit the 20-minute timer, could you introduce yourself for the people who don't know who you are and tell us a bit about what you do? Okay, so thanks very much. Um, great to be on. Final episode of 2022. So I'm Andy Craven. I'm a director of finance for a global engineering um, company. I'm also the under-12s um, RTC um, women's um, coach for Everton Football Club. Um, I also do the recruitment for Everton Women Academy, support that process. And I also work on the talent ID side from um, the boys side of Everton Football Club as well. So an array of um, things that I do on a daily and weekly basis. Um, but it's all good, um, as you say, covering those three areas that we're going to get into. Um, but yeah, very exciting life and very busy life, but all good. <laughs> exactly. And again, we nearly fell into a trap. We were having a conversation before we jumped on and we were chatting away like we did when we met a few weeks ago. I was thinking, right, let's stop. Let's record the episode. And then we can. So let's try and get it all into 20 minutes. So yeah. hashtag leadership, what's on your mind? What comes to your mind when you just hear the word leadership? I think leadership t- for me is about 100% being a, you know, a good person, 100% being authentic. Um, you know, your values and your behaviours um, in terms of integrity and then playing out um, in your daily life. Um, I don't budge in terms of being, you know, in work or outside of work. It's just living by my values each day and behaviours. Um, and leadership comes in a norm, you know, a, a number of um, facets for me. It can be through the words, it can be through our communication, it can be through um, what we do in terms of our actions. Um, so for me, though, it's always been about a 100% good person and being authentic and living the life that, you, you know, that hopefully um, has followers. Um, and that, you know, that's what it means to me in terms of leadership. Yeah, I like that. And, and again, we've talked on the podcast over the years and this year specifically about the the transition of leadership and it, it's changing and evolving and mm. social media and the visibility it's that simplicity of being a good person and we've had some really good episodes where people have just said that person sounded mm. just like a nice person yeah and it's so like simple to hear that but so nice that that comes across when people listen to an episode yeah i think one thing i i also say is you never know what's going on in people's lives and in terms of behind their eyes so in terms of those people um, turning up on a daily basis, doing their job or doing their vocation or doing whatever they're doing, um, you know, that could be leadership to them. And they are inspirational. There's so many inspirational people just who are, you know, maybe not be, you know, Premier League footballers or WSL footballers. They may be nurses going to work. They may just be people in business that people can, they can see and go, that's actually leadership that, but the, the 100% turning up because they may, may have a, a chaotic life t- a lifetime um, outside of work. Um, and I think that's also important too. So I make it a, you know, a, a daily routine of checking in with people, you know, to make sure that they're okay and, and all good in their world. Brilliant. I like that. I like that. Um, so staying with you specifically, mm-hmm. so we already identified, you've got so many threads of experience. Mm-hmm. Where did that all start? So where do you think your leadership journey started, whether it's like on reflection, now I'm asking you about it, or was there a moment when you thought like, this is now the start? Or, I think, it, you, know, coming, you know, coming onto the podcast and thinking about it, I think I've always been interested in um, never ending improvement and, and leadership. I think I got given a book in 1998 called Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. And he had a, a little say in Carney, which was constant and never ending improvement. But in terms of my leadership journey, if I can just share a story with you in terms of where maybe a light bulb moment or it happened is in 2007, 
um, myself and my wife, um, Andrea, who we've you know, been together since 1994, um, got pregnant and we're due to have our son. So um, normal pregnancy, everything went, you know, as planned, um, delighted. Um, but on at the eighth month stage, um, coming up to the 28th of December 2007, got a phone call from Andrea to say, um, I've been for my scan, they can't hear the, the baby's heartbeat. Um, so we frantically rushed to hospital um, and we stood in a room with a doctor who advised us that, um, you know, the baby was no longer um, with us at the eight month stage. So um, we were sent away from the hospital at that point and um, came back to two days later for Andrea to have a, a normal birth in terms of eight hours of labour. Um, and if I can ask yourself and your listeners, um, you know, Lucas, our stillborn son was born um, to complete silence. Now, if I just ask you to just hold silence for 10 seconds. That is something you should never, ever hear when a baby's born. So at that point, um, our life was well turned upside down in terms of my life as a, as a husband trying to be there for my wife. Um, we were um, grieving on what we were going to be doing, not on actually having memories. Um, mm -hmm. So the reason for sharing that story with you is that then at that point, someone said to me, if you can deal with this and get through this, um, you can deal with anything ultimately. Um, having to bury your own sort of, you know, stillborn son. So um, that stuck with me. And now while I haven't actually got through it, it's with me every day, it's with Andrea every day, you learn to cope with it. That mm. then sparked a light bulb in me where I wanted to become a governor of Liverpool Women's Hospital um, and actually got a job at Liverpool Women's Hospital to support and help the environment that had helped us go on to successfully have Lucas in Caden, who we've now got, who's 13 and everything's fantastic with him, which is all good, so there's a positive. Um, it didn't work out for me from uh, Liverpool Women's, um, so I had to, to leave the business. Um, and that was my sort of light bulb moment of, listen, this is your chance now to step up. You've dealt with... Um, obviously a stillbirth, um, you have been into a job that hasn't worked out despite me so being emotionally attached to it. So at that point, I then went and got a, a job as an um, assistant director of finance for a construction company and started to learn even more about leadership, really honing in on my values and behaviours of honesty, integrity, accountability, support. Um, and then the journey just started from there. Ultimately, we went on to have um, Caden, um, Caden started playing football at the age of five. I started coaching the team. As I was coaching the team, I was asked to be a referee because we didn't have a referee. As I was being a referee, I was approached by Everton Football Club to be a, um, a scout. I started being a scout. Within a couple of months, I've been promoted to a scout coordinator and talent ID. Um, then I got approached to be to, to coach the under-12 girls. So all these things, have, you know, in terms of my overall leadership journey, I pinpoint to that faithful but vital day when obviously we, we got that such you know traumatic news because ultimately if I'm having a really tough day um I do reflect on that and go you know what if you can deal with that you can deal with anything and that built a resilience in me that as I say it's always with us but you know it helps me on a daily basis yeah that's thank you so much for sharing that and again that only meeting you once and knowing all the stuff that you get I love hearing the purpose and the drive mm. behind people yeah and, and again that you alluded to that about mm. knowing what's behind people mm. and what the driver is and the the storytelling that can help yourself but mm. it also can help others yeah and, and i think that's really powerful so thank you for can you tell us a little bit about because of all the stuff you get involved in and and i said at the start i love the sport elements how yeah. we bring it in high performance i love the business element because that's where we operate and we bring the the stories crossing over in your experience, what have been the similarities, but also the differences between leadership that you've seen in sport and leadership that you've seen in business? And I know, that, I know that's a massive question. <laughs> There's probably loads of stuff. But if you were to pinpoint a couple of things that you've seen or have been the light bulb moments for positive or negatives, what, what would they be? I think that if, for me, that the main one that jumps out in terms of the similarities is the, the resilience of people in business who, you know, we've been through COVID, we've been, we're going through Brexit at the moment, there's challenges now in terms of the cost of living crisis. And you see so many people who are resilient in business, who are making really, really tough business decisions um, for the greater good. And that, that for me is leadership. 
spin that into the football world or into the academy world the resilience I see in some children and some kids when a goal goes in or when they go from an injury and they just turn around, pick themselves back up and their mentality is second to none. And it's it's the resilience ultimately, the, the two key things. Obviously, there needs to be that sort of technical and the skills and abilities in both worlds. But in, for me, it's the mindset, the resilience and that sort of bounce back ability of, of, of both sides and leadership on the pitch. I see it now when I'm watching, you know, the 12s, we may concede the goal, but I, I only have to look around and I can see through the, not even through the communication, through the values, through the players who still want to get on the ball despite us conceding the goal, to go again, reset, an instant reset button. Um, and that'll be likewise in business, you know, behind closed doors when, uh, you know, certain business, you know, difficult decisions are being made or they've had a challenging week, sales may not be where they need to be. Um, they're looking at, you know, the issues around energy crisis and they have to make those decisions. Um, so they're the two similarities for me, um, and they are the, the two leadership qualities I think are, you know, are massively important. Um, there's a multitude though in, in terms of both sides, in terms of, you know, we, we talked about it before we started recruiting, uh, sorry, recording, um, you know, the support network, certainly from an academy side, you know, the support network that's around, you know, the players um, in terms of making sure that that support network is you know, solid, you know, the, 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 the players, they may have had a difficult week, they may have had a difficult training session, they may have had a difficult game. We may have asked them to work on some key attributes or some um, plans as part of their development journey um, and making sure that, the, you know, the parents and guardians are on board with that in terms of that we may be having difficult, you know, discussions and, um, but, but, uh, you know, giving them the, you know, the fair warning um, in advance that these are coming. So we need to be supportive around it. Um, you know, to get them to the next level or to continue them on the journey. I'm sure that's exactly the same conversations as I go home of a night and have conversations with my wife if I've had a tough day in terms of, you know, okay, just being able to listen and provide air support, um, you know, and talk about things as well. So I think support network in both worlds is absolutely massive, probably not as visible in the business world as we see, but I do see an insight into it certainly in, you know, in the football world, in the academy world. I like that, and the the one quite, the one word I'm going to pull out there is bounce back ability. I like that. I like that because again, it's one of those we we talk about trigger words sometimes about having those moments where you just stop and check yourself. Yeah, bounce back ability, and it can lead you to go right. So what? Like, yeah. am I going to stay where I am if there's been a bit of negative or a bit of resilience moment of like things aren't going the right yeah. way? <laughs> so that bounce back ability. What can we do over what can't we do? Yeah, I think that, you know, the bounce back ability and also focusing on the positives, we, we certainly from, you know, a pitch point of view or in business, we, you know, as a human nature, we, we sort of focus on the, we do 99 things, one perfect, and then we do one thing that might be slightly out or not gone to plan. And as human nature, we focus on that, on that one thing, um, certainly from a, you know, a business point of view. I do it as a resilience mechanism of constantly reminding myself of the successes. I do it with the, with the players um, in terms of as they come off the pitch, constantly reminding that they've probably had really good pass, pass accuracy. They've really had good finishing. They might not have hit the target, but you know, the, at least they've tried, which is really, really positive. And it, you, you can influence that with every conversation. You, you know, I hear, I, I hear people you know, come into work sometimes and say, oh, I got stuck at lights, got stuck at lights. And I say to them, did you count the green lights? Did you actually count the green lights that you actually got through? And why don't you take them red lights as a, as a period of reflection where you can sit there, you might have your podcast on, you might be listening to something else. You know, don't always see the red lights as, as, as a negative because you will pass plenty and plenty of green lights, rest assured. So, I, you know, I say that all the time. Um, also, I think, you know, what's vitally important is, is sort of manners as well. If, and certainly from, you know, you look at, you know, the younger generation now, certainly, you know, growing up. And it's it's making sure that you know we we've all got sort of technical technology in our phones or you know in our hands all the time. Want to have you know the face to face conversation? Just you know it, it doesn't really happen as much. I know we're having one today, but you know I, you speak to thirteen or fourteen year olds and it's how are you and it's like. Mm. Mm. And it's sort of like engaging them in a conversation in terms of asking them. You know, I do it with the players now. How are you? And they'll go, Oh, I'm great. And I go, yeah, I'm fine too. Thanks for asking. Thanks very much for asking. So I'm, I'm encouraging them to ask the question back, not as part of a, you know, a ploy, but just to get them to think and start to generate the conversation. Because I think that's one of my certain concerns for society moving forward. Our ability to social interact um, mm -hmm. is going to be 
significantly reduced just because of the mechanisms, which are fantastic, don't get me wrong, but are potentially overused. Yeah. Do you know, I love that. And again, sharing like my son, Lucas, that's nine, was at Everton for a few weeks and stuff. And my love of sports and exactly what you've just been talking about there. And and obviously, funnily enough, <laughs> not through telling, but through nurturing, mm. will go and say thank you every training session that he has week by week, not just yeah. when he went to Everton. And just building those things up, he's really keen to, mm. to get to the captaincy. And, and he has had it a few times and be yeah. that person that talks on the pitch. And you are right, having that, we, we spoke a couple of episodes ago, or, or there's a couple coming up as well, about having people skills, yeah. about being able to speak out loud, which sounds really weird saying that. And we were all there as youngsters, not wanting to say too much. But yeah. with the people element moving forward, because of technology, with I think is going to be even more vital, mm. and even more important. Um, off the back of COVID, people not having that interaction for it, it still amazes me that I say it was about three years, wasn't it? Yeah. Of people not fully engaging with each yeah. other. You're only starting to now see me personally, but I'm sure the people listening can relate to that. Yeah. That there is a a, a sort of a, a backlog of that, isn't it? About people's skill ability to mm. talk to each other and stand yeah. up. And there's always been a fear of talking for a high percentage of people um, in, in front of people. But I think it's, it's crept a little bit more so yeah. um yeah it's really language. important can you tell us about more about that language piece because i love that about some of the some of the things you do that on the face of it you're aware of and they're little small things but the use of language to help positive outcomes yeah i think from you know from what we do on on a language point of view certainly you know with the with the girls using the, the captaincy as an example you know um everyone wants to be a captain of a football team that's fantastic and we have players, and it's great that your son, you know, Lucas has been captain. But what I say to the, the ones who aren't captain is, you don't need the arm, to, arm band to be a captain. You, yeah. you don't. Just go on and, and do your thing on the pitch. You can be a captain without having the armband. Just do it through what you're delivering. So simple communication me mechanisms like that and keeping things really, really simple helps in terms of communicating, with, certainly with the players. In business, I think if you're, you know, it, it's, especially in a global environment, just keep the messages really, really short, simple, you know, get your point out and then, you know, move away really um, in terms of, you know, what you're looking to get out of the conversation, what you're looking to, you know, promote. Certainly, as you used the word before, nature, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, encouraging players or encouraging staff to, to do what, the, you know, what they need to do ultimately. So language is vitally important. Yeah, um, you know, we have a saying that we, you know, we stole off Ted Lad Lasso, you know, be like a goldfish, be like a goldfish, you know, if something goes wrong, just be like a goldfish, forget about it, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, next action, next action, next action, um, because, you know, we, we do, we see it all the time, we, we are, you know, we overthink, you see players going deep inside if they're emotional, if they're intrinsic, yeah, I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's watching and using your eyes to see, you can see instantly where people are at in terms of, um, you know, whether they're having a good day or a bad day. And then you just probe and you'll know when times not to probe because they don't want to probe. They just want to just deal with it themselves, um, yeah. you know, which is great. But I think, you know, it's, I see from certainly from, a, you know, an academy point of view and a talent ID point of view, I see some, you know, players turn up and they've got an unbelievable mindset, resilience and just driven will to win um, that, that's within them, that's within them themselves. Um, and it's really fascinating to see. And you see the fascinating ones in the turnarounds when you have a, you know, I won't be disclosing any, you know, confidences here, but we've had conversations with players who may have not been, you know, at the top of the group to say, you know, you just really, really need to work on this side of the game or that side of the game. And it's interesting reaction. Their reaction is either... I'll take it on board and I'll go away away from that. I value your opinion. And some of them players then fly. And it's unbelievable, the transformation going from where they weren't to actually where they are. And then some players, you know, sometimes not in the current environment, might go away and go, I know it all, and just carry on doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. And that goes into the open and closed mindset, isn't it, of, you know, Carol Dweck and, and that side of things. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's vitally important. So from a language point of view, I think it's just... Yeah, making sure that you keep your messages concise and knowing your audience 
um, certainly when you're talking to, to players um, and keeping yeah. it really simple because... Awesome. It's, I like that. I like that. I've got one. I, I'm trying to squeeze in another question. We've got oh, a couple of minutes left. So sticking with the business side of things, mm -hmm. we know that technology is a big part of it. Hybrid working is a big part of it. We're not in the room with the people in the business anymore, mm -hmm. especially on a global audience that you're working with as well. What sort of things are you consciously aware of that you do or the business does to keep people engaged, keep people on the leadership journey and keep that people development going forwards? Okay, so what we do, um, obviously our clients are all over the world, so our, most of our meetings take place, you know, over over different platforms, you know, Zoom being one of them and Teams. I think from a, you know, a, a people and a staffing point of view, um, what we do is we have business support days where we're all on site. So we make sure that everyone's on site for those particular days. Um, and we also, I sort of reach out to my team, on, you know, on a, on a couple of days, um, a week basis, making sure they're okay, just simple check-ins. We have a mentoring program, um, which we mix around across the leadership team. So someone from in my finance team wouldn't just naturally just be a mentor, have me as the mentor. What they would ultimately do sometimes is they would sp speak to the, the chief commercial officer or they might speak to the chief exec officer as part of their mentoring journey. Um, so they get a holistic approach to the overall business. But I think for me, certainly, you know, in the, the massive increase of, you know, uh, mental health, I think it's important those check-ins, how are you feeling? And being able to, you know, deeply knowing the people who you're working with, because asking someone how they're feeling or are they okay, understand them when they say, I'm fine, whether to prod, as I said before, or pro, or whether just to back away. And that becomes, yeah. that comes down from knowing your people ultimately and being sincere when you ask that question. It's not just a throwaway question. Um, so from a global point of view, as I say, where, where we have to, um, you know, we, we, we do go to the countries that we need to be in and have them face-to-face -face conversations. Um, but um, mainly we do them over teams, but we check them with our staff all the time. It's vitally important, the mental health side. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. I'm glad you got that in the end. And again, when you're saying about that double, almost like double check-in, I've had that happen to me. Like mm. someone said, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm all right. And they asked me again. It was like, actually, no, I'm not all right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I've, I've had the opportunity to do it to others, which yeah. is, I see it as a privilege. And it's okay to have those conversations. And it's okay to not be okay, isn't it? And it's okay to yeah. um, creating that sort of vulnerability environment where it can be trusted and closed. Um, yeah. And if you need to get upset, get upset and ju just share where you're at. It's, it's not going to yeah. go into the room. Um, no, it's vitally important. Yeah, definitely. So a great way to finish the podcast and a great way to finish this year's episodes as well. I can't believe it. It's amazing. We were chatting a little bit about where the podcast came from before we jumped on and it's another year done and we're yeah. going on even better next year. We've got some amazing guests coming on. So next week's episode is really celebrating this year. We're going to put out the top 10 of this year um, just to give and The only reason we do that is the people that are new to the podcast, it gives them 10 just to go to. And honestly, nine times out of 10, I get actual feedback from people who go, and I've had those 10, I'm on the net, I'm, I'm having everything now, yeah. and we're consuming it all. So um, Andy, thank you so much for your time today. Um, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed that, please let us know which elements you can relate to, which bits you can add to your leadership journey. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure you follow us on your podcast provider and have a fantastic Christmas. And um, we look forward to sharing even more insights into next year, 2023. Sounds weird saying it. Andy, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me on. Fantastic. And we'll see you all next year. Take care. Bye.